Today is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls. Today also marks the start of the UN's 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence, which runs until Human Rights Day on 10th December under the theme, Orange the World, Fund, Respond, Prevent, Collect. According to UN Women, one in three women worldwide experience physical or sexual violence, mostly by an intimate partner. Violence against women and girls is a human rights violation and a public health issue that should concern us all. Evidence already shows that many of the risks and impacts of COVID-19 are disproportionately affecting women and girls globally. As the pandemic is intensifying gender inequalities that existed before the pandemic and exposed vulnerabilities in social and economic systems. The COVID-19 pandemic is particularly affecting women migrant workers across Asia and the Pacific who are more likely to work in insecure labor roles under precarious conditions as well as women with irregular migration status. Due to stay-at-home orders and movement restrictions to contain the virus, more domestic violence helplines and shelters across the world are reporting rising calls for help. These restrictions are making it more difficult for women to get away from abusive situations in their homes and access already limited services. These trends are particularly concerning in the Asia-Pacific region, where GBV rates overall are high and especially in the Pacific Island countries, which some have the highest recorded rates of GBV, with nearly two out of three women experiencing sexual or physical violence by their partners. This year, the UN Secretary General's Unite by 2030 to End Violence Against Women campaign calls for global actions to increase awareness, galvanize advocacy efforts, and share knowledge and innovations. In line with IOM's institutional framework for addressing GBV in crisis, IOM teams in Asia and the Pacific adopted existing GBV interventions to ensure services continue to be provided for vulnerable women through IOM's Women and Girls Safe Spaces, but also new solutions were found to ensure economic opportunities to for vulnerable women in other contexts, such as the Marshall Islands. In Cambodia and Nepal, IOM has also provided vulnerable returning women with cash assistance to meet basic needs, including transportation fees to return home. As we mark the 16 days of activism, we must ensure that our efforts to protect women and girls are based firmly on the six critical areas of action outlined in the interagency statement on violence against women and girls in the context of COVID-19. First, make urgent and flexible funding available for women's rights organizations and recognize their roles as first responders. Second, support health and social services to continue their duty of care to violence against women survivors and to remain accessible, especially to those most likely to be left behind. Third, Ensure that services for violence against women and girl survivors are regarded as essential, remain open and are resourced and are made accessible for those most likely to be left behind. Fourth, place a high priority on police and justice responses. Fifth, put preventative measures in place. And last but not the least, collect data only if it is clear that it is needed. It will be used to improve services and ethical and safety standards can be met. I believe that with these six critical areas of action, we can make a difference during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and protracted state of crisis it has generated across the world and support women and girl survivors of violence to stay safe and free of violence. It is the least we can do. Thank you.